G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here, and today I want to talk to you about the Nikon ZFC. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I've been using this camera for about six months now, and there's some things that I really enjoy, and some things that drive me nuts that you need to know about if you're considering buying this camera. Now, I've done a review on this camera, and you can wait till the end of this video, and there'll be a link to it, or you can just head to that right now and have a look at it. It's a DX camera or APS-C or a crop sensor. So it's not a full frame, it's a crop sensor. And so it has limitations, but with a crop sensor, they're usually smaller, more portable. So this is a perfect camera for travel photography. But today what we're gonna do is I am gonna have a red dot if I'm saying something that's pretty ugly. It's gonna be an orange dot if it's bad or okay, and a green dot if I love it. And so you can track along with the dot about what I'm saying about the camera uh, as a bit of a well, fun way to engage in it. Should we go? Come on. First thing to say is why this camera was made. It's nostalgic. You have all the dials and options here that you would have on a vintage camera. Now that's great because it forces you to slow down. So you can shoot in full auto, you can shoot in manual, you can shoot in aperture priority or shutter priority. But if you shoot in manual and you're using the diodes on the top, it really causes you to slow down to think about how this camera works and what sort of photo you might want to take. One of the challenges with it is the writing is so small. It has to be small, where else are you going to fit it? But it's so small that my I just can't see. I get blurry. I, I don't want to be I don't want to be that old that I have to wear glasses just to read what's on my camera. Um, and there's also a little window that tells you what f-stop it is but again it's very small and it's not illuminated so it's really hard to see what yeah i'm getting old now the shutter mode on this goes from four seconds all the way up to one four thousandths of a second the only way you use your shutter scroll wheel on the back is to put it on a third of a step and then it gives you all these options up to 900 seconds that's one of the standouts for this camera and a, a real win but you can't use the scroll wheel if you're not on that third step the aperture wheel scroll wheel on the front does control the aperture and that works all the time and you can see where the aperture is by that little window I was talking about. I think it's strange how this camera has a massive dial for the exposure compensation. It's just a massive dial. Like it just seems like a lot of real estate on such a small function that this camera does and a function that I would imagine a lot of people buying this camera wouldn't use all the time. If you would like to disagree with that, please do and put it in the comments below. And also if you like my hat, this is my new hat. Do you like my hat? Yeah. If you're loving the hat, you can get one too in the merch, or you can just say something about it below. Unless you don't like it, then you don't have to say something. You can just, let's move on. This camera is only 445 grams, and if you stick the kit lens on the front, it weighs next to nothing. It gives you 16 to 50 on a crop sensor. That's a big, wide range. It also comes, as you know, with different fascias, uh, which I have mine free. I had a free one that I could claim when I got this camera. The problem is it was going to take a week to get the camera there, and then they had to change it, and then a week to send it back. So you could do that, your camera, for three weeks. That's a lot just to make it look different. But if you buy one and you're like, I want to change the color, then you can change the color, you change, can change the casing, but you can't do it by yourself. You can shoot 11 frames a second on 12-bit RAW and get 45 shots in straight off the bat, back to back before the buffer fills up. And you can shoot nine frames a second on 14-bit RAW and fill the buffer up that way. But I imagine you wouldn't get 45 shots in the buffer because of the larger size of file and the processing that needs to take place. Now the battery and the card slot go underneath and they're a little bit finicky to get to. I don't have big nails. So getting this open is a little bit of a challenge. Once it's open, it's easy to access the battery and the card, that's no worries, and it clips in, it's nice and flush. Now let's talk about the fully articulating screen, perhaps this camera's greatest feature. You can flip the screen out, it flips all the way around, and so you can do some selfie work or some vlogging work. So I usually vlog with this camera, it works out really well, except for these little dangly plastic things that rattle around if there's a little bit of wind, and they cause a banging and irritation. However, once you flip around and you're using the monitor on the outside, this has priority over whatever you choose to do with the monitor button at the back. That monitor button allows you to automatically switch or prefer your eyepiece or your back screen. Now when this is open and you're viewing your camera, you can't actually change the ISO at all on the touch screen, even when the screen is fully back and tucked in. That's a real challenge. Also, when the screen is out, you can't play back 
you can't just touch something on the screen that makes it play back. You have to come around, you have to close the screen and then press the playback button. When the screen's out, you can't reach around the camera and press the play button to see what you've done. So that is a real limitation. I reckon they could fix that in firmware. I thought they would have by this stage. It's a little frustrating that they haven't, but maybe they'll watch this video and change it. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I'm laughing like you are. The other beautiful thing about this is it has horizon leveling. So it has a little um, spirit level that tells you when it's off kilter and when it's dead flat. But when you flip out the screen, you lose that. So you can't set it up with that as you're um, composing your shot. What you have to do is make sure the camera's level when this is flipped in and then come around the other side and get in front of the camera. That's a bit frustrating. It'd be so good if you had all the functionality with the screen facing you as you would if you were behind the camera and it doesn't make sense because they've made the screen like this so that you can have full control over it. The other problem with the screen being out is you have no control over the scroll wheels. So basically, if your camera's like this and it's facing you and you reach to change the shutter or the aperture, you can't. <sighs> I did say that was ugly, didn't I? I did. Now this camera, when in video mode, does not have auto ISO. You do have auto ISO when you're taking photos with it, but there's no button on the external camera that allows you to do that. You have to actually go into the settings, into the shooting menu, into the auto ISO sensitivity, and you need to turn that on that then enables you to have auto ISO. You can make a shortcut, which you might use the record button just next to the shutter button. So when it's in photographic mode, you can just hit the record button and it goes to auto ISO. But other than that, that's, that's a limitation because if you're travel photographizing, and you're going out with this and you want to take some shots and the lights change and it's going all over the place and you're just in the moment or you want to do some street photography in the moment you need an auto ISO so you can just bang that on and go so I'm not sure why they've had some of the features here that allows it to do some things and then those things it might built to allow you to do it then limits because it doesn't have the functionality to back it up it's like they've they've come 80% of the way on a bunch of things and just not mm, pushed it to the extra 100 now, if you've watched one of my videos with this, which I'll put a link to at the end, I went whale watch shooting with this, and I put a 150 to 600 Tamron lens on that. That lens is, it's called the beast for a reason. It looked absolutely ridiculous. I wouldn't recommend putting a large lens on this. And the reason is when you change the focal length of the lens, it pulls the camera out of your hand because there's nowhere to grip. So it's really nice to have a, a snug little camera, but there's nowhere to grip. Now, Small Rig have made an L bracket that you can bolt onto the bottom and the sides, and it gives you that. I've made a review about that. And if you're gonna get this camera, I'd highly recommend getting Small Rig's contribution to the ZFC. It's a winner, but it would allow you to put a bigger lens on. The other lens is pretty cool. It just pops out. So once it pops out, then you can control the focal length, and then it pops back in. So it keeps it nice and compact, but Skill gives you the ability, and I love that. Ooh. Now, I wouldn't put filters on this, and I wouldn't be thinking, can I put a filter on, because it's only 46 millimeters across here, and that 46 millimeters is not very big for a filter um, thread to go on. You just wouldn't do it, a step-up ring. I don't know if they do a 46 to 86 step-up ring, <laughs> and you wouldn't want a ton of step-up rings on this, but it's a street photography camera. It's a travel ph photographer camera. You just wouldn't use filters. Do not buy this to put filters on it. Now you can't charge this while you're using it. You have to turn it off for it to effectively charge. But another bit of a downside is if you partly charge the battery, so you drain the battery to zero, you partly charge the battery, you put the battery in, the camera says it's full even when it's actually not full. And then the battery goes down much quicker because there's less juice in the camera. So you can be you can be fooled by turning on the camera and going, oh, I thought I used it, but that's good. It's got a full reading when actually the, ca the battery isn't full. Now the eye detection you have with this camera when you're shooting stills is a little bit hit and miss, but the tracking you can do on this is pretty good, providing that which you're tracking doesn't go out of sight and then come back in because if it goes out of sight this loses it and when it comes back in it doesn't pick it back up. In terms of the autofocus it is actually really good it's really quick and swift and what you'd want especially for a camera like this that's entry level nostalgic I want it because I want a special camera that I'm going to use for specific needs. And the little square that sits in the middle of the screen that tells you when you're focused on something is not 
always a true indicator of what you're focused on. So you can think you're focused on and bang a shot off and it's not 100% accurate. So sometimes it feels like it's on or it's off. I hope you enjoyed this and benefited from it. I don't mean to, to slag this camera off, but I've just, there's a number of things that I've been surprised in a not so great way, a bit disappointed about that I thought would have been easy wins for them to not cost a lot, but to make this into a, a great camera. So something for you to ponder and think about as you're considering purchasing this, or if you've maybe had the same issues, then it's not you. It's not me either, it's the camera. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. That would mean a heap to me. It's been awesome hanging out with you. And if you'd like to join the channel, you can do that just down below. Just uh, give it a bit of a click, give it a bit of a look. When you click the join button, it doesn't mean you're joining. It doesn't like take all your bank details and you're done forever. You can just see what it's all about. I've waddled on too much. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. There are a ton of geckos. And a ton is what is now officially named a group of geckos because they're one of this few species that do not have a group name. You know, like a group of vultures is called a committee and a group of rhinos is called a crash and a group of goldfish is called a glimp. Well, you do now. Group of geckos? No. Nah. So we're calling it ton.